So I wanted to do another video today regarding O-rings and basically using them to force filters onto masks that they're not meant to fit on. And I know in an ideal world you'd always have, say, Ghost filters for Ghost masks, NATO Stanag for NATO, although it's not as important because RD40 sort of fits it. You know, DIN for DIN, that kind of thing. But let's say you're in a situation where you really need to fit a NATO filter onto a Ghost mask, for example, because it's a life or death situation, potentially. You know, especially if it's not a very collectible mask. Let's say you've got a GP5 or a GP5M, you know, Shum 62, um, or whatever it is, Shum 66U, um, whatever the actual real names of them are. And you just simply want to get a NATO filter on there because you've got a NATO filter, you've not got an in-date Ghost filter, and for whatever reason, you know, life and death. So let's take this Corona thing, for example, at the moment. Let's say you've got a GP5, you've managed to get some spare NATO filters for it, but, you know, they don't you obviously can't fit them properly, or you bought FP5 filters uh, for your GP5, but then you found out they were recent FP5 filters, not the old ones, and they're no longer, you know, GOS compatible. Let's use that as an example. I've covered this before in a video, and other people have talked about it before on YouTube, but I think it's worth going over it, because I also want to test this with that GOS to NATO adapter. So, if you remember, I reviewed this the other day and wasn't very happy with it. This is a GOS to NATO adapter, but the issue with it was, was that basically no O-ring in there, so you know, no use. So I've got some washers here, O-rings, let's put one on there. So what these are is generally whenever you open a filter there'll be one in the cap. Always keep them. They are really handy for stuff like this. So now we've got an O-ring in there. Let's screw this filter back in. Now it's not wanting to screw in all that far because the O-ring, this is quite a shallow port which is another not very ideal thing. But let's just get that as tight on there as it will go, which again it's not very reassuring, is it, this, because it's a bit too shallow, but we've at least got the gossip bit there. So that's on there. And as you'll see, there's already an O-ring in the GP5M, PMG2. So let's screw this in here. Right, and now let's see if this works. So, of course, being bold again makes it very easy to use these masks, so let's test this. Only a very faint smell of banana oil this time, so in theory, this Ghost adapter would work if you get a good sized O ring to go with it. But as I said, the problem with this, as I said before, was main complaint of it didn't come with an O ring, and look how shallow that little bit is there. Again, once you've put an O ring in it, you've not got very much to screw your filter in. But <clears throat> let's say you're going to do, you know, the other thing. You've not even got any sort of Ghost NATO adapter. All you've got is, say, your GP5M, and basically you want to just put your NATO filter on it, life or death situation. So stick your O-rings inside. Let's, yeah, let's just use one to begin with. Pop that one on the camera. You're going to force your NATO filter on. This particular NATO filter is trying to... MSA. So MSA, big USA. Mining safety appliances, isn't it? So yeah, let's screw that in. That screwed in remarkably well for... um a non ghost filter. Well, it shouldn't it being MSA it definitely shouldn't be ghost, but there we go, it's screwed in fairly well regarding anyway. So maybe it's just not very fat threads on this NATO filter, who knows? So anyway, let's now put this back on. And let's give this a test. No smell coming through, so that sort of works. Again, this isn't ideal. And what I would recommend to people is if you've done this, to be extra safe, get some duct tape, electrical tape, you know, plumbing tape, anything that's waterproof, wrap that bit there around it, because if, say, it's for corona and you only want to use it as a particle filter, that's not very important. I, f I noticed a bit more of a grind coming out than going in. Let me just... I'm just a bit sort of wondering now why that went in the first time without much grinding. Ah, there we go. It's about there it starts doing it. Hear that? Again, that's the thing with, um, obviously, and you can see a bit of paint on there. But yeah, so, said so O-rings are really, really useful. Do not throw your O-rings away if you obviously have a mask and decide. Can't work out where I've put the other O-ring now, but <clears throat> regardless, the point is with O-rings, yeah, keep these. Because if you open a filter and it comes with an O-ring, these can potentially be lifesavers just because, again, you know, Worst case scenario, you actually do have to use it as a lifesaver to bodge something to fit a filter that doesn't fit very well. 
Also, I will point out as well that I've sometimes bought 40mm NATO filters or RD40 filters for what are meant to be standard RD40 or Stanag masks. And some masks seem to really just not like some filters. A bit like, you know, if you get an air rifle, there's some brands of air rifles do, just do not like some pellets. I think it's a bit like that. Where, however, they've tapered it, even though it all technically is the same standard screw type. I put on top of the camera, didn't I? That's the other ring was. It doesn't always work. So, again, let's try it with this one. We'll put this O-ring in here. Put this O-ring here. Now let's just try and force this filter on. The point is the O-rings are basically meaning the top of the filter makes a much better seal there. Obviously, if you've ever done plumbing type stuff, you'll know the use of O-rings. Knocking that out there and banging my finger. But again, this again, this isn't very scientific. And if you've got a collectible mask, please, please, please do not fucking bodge ghost filters on and you know damage the threads. Sorry, you know shove NATO filters on. The whole point of this is, say at the moment you've just got a GP5, a GP5M, an MC1, something like that. You want to put, you've got some new NATO filters lying around for some reason, and you know you want to do it. Nah, with, that's the problem with having that adapter. With both of these on, just doesn't fit very well. But yeah. The point being though, that, you know, just as shown, pop your little thing in there, screw the filter in, get that nice and tight against there, and then hopefully, the O-ring bridges the gap. Yeah, perfect, and you can't smell. And again, as I said, I'll just reiterate it again, just for anybody that didn't catch it. Get duct tape or something, put that round the outside there, you're gonna make it a bit more secure. This isn't perfect, of course I would always advise people because they're, you know, except for the crisis of all the masks selling out at the moment, normally you can get RD40 masks for sensible prices, so, as in, you know, NATO ones, just do that, but, you know, at the moment, um, I'd say yes, if you've got an MC1, a GP5, you know, a CM3, something like that, a mask that's worth fuck all in terms of collectible value, um, you know, and you've somehow, for whatever reason, been able to get brand new NATO P3 filters, whatever, if you've got O-rings, you know, and a bit of duct tape, why not do it, because you might save your life, you know, potentially. Um, again, for something like Corona, that is more sensible than... Um, against a chemical threat, because I've always said the problem with doing this with a chemical threat, if you put a filter on and duct tape it on, is that obviously if you need to change the filter, it's going to be really awkward to do it. Whereas if it's just for a particulate threat, obviously particle filters last literally months, months to years in all my experience of using them, unless you're in a job where you use a particle filter, you know, day after day grinding and sanding, that's when they might last days or a week. But for regular people walking out and about, you'd have to be in a really, really poorly polluted area, you know, to um, have that as a problem. So there you go. Uh, using the magic of washers to, um, you know, put ghost or NATO filters on ghost masks or whatever. Again, it's not a perfect thing, but we live in an imperfect world, don't we? So there you are.